Morris Newman, I'm glad to see you. With that Q&A on Monday, this is the ABC totally out of control, isn't it? Well, it's a good question, Andrew, whether or not the ABC is out of control or whether management of the ABC is out of control and other people have actually taken control because editorial policy is not being directed in any way from the top. Well, I have to agree with you there, or if it is, then we've really got to ask Ida Buttrose what the hell she's up to. Three ABC shows in seven months featuring Aboriginal activists and actors calling for arson against a wickedly racist Australia. What is the agenda that's coming through here? Well, it's clearly an anti-Australian, anti-traditional values culture. Originally, the ABC was set up to prepare people for Australian country life, uh, cultural life. They did this through children's programs and ultimately they were consistently promoting Australian traditional values. Now they are the most prominent of critics. And it clearly seems to me the agenda is to tear down what we have become used to in terms of believing in ourselves, our self-confidence as a nation going forward. And so my sense is that the ABC's uh, agenda really is to undermine the cohesion of Australia and to create more and more division. Morris, I agree with you. And that, that agenda, I think, has been obvious now for a few years. What is the line, I think, now has been crossed is the actual advocacy of violence on the ABC without anyone saying, no, that's not on, no one contradicting them. This really frightens me. Now, what should be done about this? Andrew, I'm not a lawyer, but I would have thought that uh, this is bordering on insightful, uh, in, insight for violence, which, as I understand it, is criminal. So what can be done about it? First of all, the first line is the government. The minister is the representative of all of us. He is a shareholding minister. He is the person who is responsible for handing out the money uh, through the government, through taxpayers providing the $1.1 billion. So that's what needs to be done. Somebody has to step in and say this is not acceptable. Well, how come... What do you make of the fact that the Minister, Paul Fletcher, has said nothing, nothing, at least publicly that I've seen, nothing about this? I find it extraordinary. Absolutely incredible. But <laughs> this man's actually in control of the ABC and in control of our, what we're funding. I find it astonishing. Well, what does it tell you also about the new chairman, Ida Butros? Uh, well, again, has I mean, lost any control? the silence is deafening. It's deafening from the chairman through to the managing director, through to the board. There's been no apology given. I mean, the obscenities that uh, poured out of that program, there's been no suggestion there. That, in fact, if you go to the, the transcript on the website, all the obscenities are still in there. <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing. I look, I find it absolutely incredible too. Um, Morris Newman, the ABC, well, I know you were chairman of it, <laughs> but I now think reform of the ABC is hopeless. I used to say reform it. I think it's hopeless. Its bias is too entrenched. And I also think it's dangerously big. It's just too big for a healthy democracy. Five national radio stations, four national TV stations, an online paper. It's smothering competition. What do you think the answer is now? Privatise it? Well, I don't think privatising it will do anything because certainly you, the, the, uh, the spectrum is worth something, but the programming, uh, by and large, I mean, there are some good programs, but by and large, the, they're predictable, uh, they are, as I say, anti-Australian, and I don't think that uh, you would find too many takers. Well, it's tough. I mean, if it's such a wonderful resource that everybody wants to watch, and the ABC is a national treasure, all those... All those uh, claims that we hear from the ABC, then surely people on the left will put in their hands in their own pockets and subsidise it. They'll yeah. buy it and they'll, they'll, you know, subscribe to it, just like people subscribe to Sky who want to see it. Well, we know the answer to that, Andrew. First of all, the, <laughs> uh, the, staff, the, the, the staff to revenue ratio is about 46%. That's how much they take out of the $1.1 billion that goes to the staff. If you look at Channel 9, if you look at uh, uh, Seven uh, Media and so on, and I'm sure particularly with Sky, you will find just a fraction of that. So that, uh, first of all, 
the amount of money that we spend on the ABC does not go to programming. It may well be that there is something to be said for regional television, regional ra radio services and so on, but when it comes to the metros, you have to ask the question that in 2019, do we really need a national uh, publicly funded broadcaster? The, the media is so ubiquitous, you can get it on the web, you can get it wherever. And in fact, young people these days aren't going to mainstream media. They're going to the web and other sources. And the other point I'd make, Andrew, is that when it comes to uh, the ABC being such an icon, Certainly when I was growing up, the ABC News was iconic. We used to gather around the radio at 7 o'clock as a ritual to listen to the nightly news. The last uh, survey I, I saw, which was an Oztam survey in mid-October, showed that uh, the ABC News uh, registered something like 660,000 viewers. Channel 7 News was over 1 million. So, so much for the ABC being iconic. The audiences are dwindling and ultimately it's going to be more and more difficult for them to make a case for the 1.1 billion and the more, of course, they're asked for more all the time, to be able to, be, to, to, to sustain that. I think you're absolutely spot on. Thank you so much indeed for your time, Morris Newman. Thank you for inviting me on.